Once Eliot had a firm grip of the language, he spent the next 14 years translating the entire 66 books of the English Bible, which was really fast. Just for reference, it had taken 44 scholars seven years to produce the King James Version. Eliot had to become a grammarian and a lexiconographer to create the Algonquian Dictionary. He used the assistance of a few local Indians in order to help facilitate the translation. Believe it or not, the first Bible ever printed in America wasn't in English. The first printing was in the native language of Algonquian. This project started back in England, and the mission was to reach the indigenous tribes around the budding colonies of New England. In 1631, a man named John Eliot came to the Massachusetts Bay Colony from England. He was a Puritan missionary with a massive undertaking. His mission was to convert the indigenous Massachusetts tribes to Christianity. Eliot's instrument to do this was through the Christian scriptures, but it was only made possible by the arrival of the printing press. In 1638, the first printing press made its way across the Atlantic to the shores of Massachusetts. The press was transported by a group of Puritans who disagreed with the religious teachings of the Church of England. They came to Cambridge, Massachusetts and opened the first American print shop, which would later become the Harvard University Press. Back in England in 1649, Parliament set up a corporation called the President and Society for the Propagation of the Gospel in New England, but it was later known simply as the New England Company. The corporation collected money for missionary purposes in America. Commissioned by the New England Company, John Eliot received funds to translate the English Bible into the language of Algonquian. Eliot knew that this was the most effective way to reach the Native Americans. He spent the next several years learning the Indian language and specializing in the local Natick dialect of the Algonquian, used by the Indians of Massachusetts. The word Massachusetts itself being an Algonquian word for at the Great Hill, referring to the Blue Hills southwest of what is now Boston. Once Eliot had a firm grip of the language, he spent the next 14 years translating the entire 66 books of the English Bible, which was really fast. Just for reference, it had taken 44 scholars seven years to produce the King James Version. Eliot had to become a grammarian and a lexiconographer to create the Algonquian Dictionary. He used the assistance of a few local Indians in order to help facilitate the translation. By 1656, he had finished a partial translation. He printed the Gospel of Matthew, the Book of Genesis, and the Book of Psalms in Algonquian. It was a sample printing to show the New England Company what the completed Algonquian Bible might look like. The corporation approved the sample and sent a professional printer to America in 1660, along with 100 reams of paper and extra O's and K's to accommodate the Algonquian language. This was the first time in history that this language had been put into print. The difficulty was the fact that Algonquian language had no prior writing system. It was a strictly oral language. In Cotton Mather's Ecclesiastical History of New England, he calls Eliot an evangelical hero, as well as pointing out the insane difficulty of the Algonquian language. He said that the Indian language didn't have the least affinity or any derivative of European speech. For example, the word for questions is kumagkad See what I mean? Eliot not only had to learn this language, but compile a dictionary of sorts to catalog all the words he needed. And on top of that, figure out the written grammar and way to phonetically spell every word. This was a seriously difficult and unprecedented endeavor. Over the next few years, 1,500 copies of the New Testament were printed. In 1663, they printed 1,000 copies of the entire Bible. England contributed about 16,000 pounds, which today is a small fortune for the printing of these Bibles. Eliot's translation answered the question he received many times by the Algonquians. How may we get faith in Christ? Of course, the church's answer was to pray and read the Bible. Only after Eliot's translation was there finally a Bible they could read. 
Eliot's Indian Bible is the earliest known example of the Algonquian translation. It was also the first time in history all 66 books of the Bible were translated into a new language of no previous written words. Eliot was the first translator in American history to translate the entire Bible into a language not native to the translator. Previously, scholars had translated the Bible from Greek, Hebrew, or Latin into their own language. With Eliot, the translation was made into a language learned solely for the purpose of evangelizing. Eliot believed his translation was sacred and holy work, and it was to be regarded with much fear, care, and reverence. The Christian Algonquians, who later became known as Praying Indians, formed new villages away from the other Algonquians, not wanting to be tainted by their old pagan practices. John Eliot was bold when threatened with persecution from chiefs, priests, and even when he found himself deep in the wilderness. Eliot would say, my God is with me, so I fear neither you nor all the sachems in the country. I will go on, and do touch me if you dare. The first English Bible would not be printed in the United States for another 120 years. Eliot's Indian Bible was way ahead of its time and was one of the largest printed jobs done in 17th century colonial America. Eliot's work was unbelievably difficult and unprecedented. He had a massive undertaking and saw it through till the end. Through his translation, he was able to win a magnitude of souls for the kingdom. <laughs>